I think most of us will agree that our current development are not on track. We need sustainable development because it meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own need, which is most of the case is young people. So we need to pay attention on the young people because we don't know like what will be happen in the future. If, for example, we do not really taking care of our current sustain of, of our current development. So the concept of needs, in particular, the essential needs of the world poor, to which overriding priority should be given, and. Uh, our current development is more, more likely about the global capitalism, where profit is the main priority of most of the people, therefore it creates high inequality and massive ecological crisis. So this is one of the examples why uh, we can see that our development is not on track, because the Gini index rose from 31 in 2001 into 40 in 2014. So it means that those who are rich are getting rich and those who are poor becoming uh, poorer. Uh, so what we have in Indonesia, right? So we have the legal basis, we have presidential decree, we have Minister of National Development Planning. We also have the formulation of action plan, both national and regional action plan. We have also roadmap of SDGs Indonesia 2030. And we have a lot of target and indicators and we actively participated in voluntary national review in 2017, 19 and 2021. But the question is um, whether all of this process have been achieved through multi-stakeholder approach or not. So about Indonesia progress in achieving SDGs, we are currently ranked 97 out of 165 countries according to SDSN index. Uh, there are some goals that we need to pay attention on. For example, those who are stagnant right now, uh, there are they are number 13, 14, uh, 11, 15, 16, and 17. About the localization of SDGs, we have uh, we just created uh, the regulation of village. Uh, according to Permen Desa number 13 of 2020 concerning priority for the use of village fund in 2021. And uh, this is about the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threat on SDG. So we actually have a, a very good commitment of multi-stakeholder partnership. We have strong law and institutional coordination, alignment of SDGs. But unfortunately, there are also problems in the comprehensive and integrati integrative database and transparency. We also, not many people in Indonesia are aware of the SDGs, especially those who are coming from the local level. And there are also problems on the funding itself, something that we need to overcome together with the government and also civil society and the others. There are also several opportunities that we need to pay attention, for example, data innovation, uh, you know, uh, alternative funding like Zakat, something that most likely uh, Islamic countries are doing and increasing Indonesia position in international diplomacy. There are several threats for Indonesia. Maybe some of you already knew that some of you already know, sorry, uh, there Indonesia is prone to the disaster. So that's why we need to taking care of the sustainable development goals comprehensively and urgently because what's, what's the problems? Um, the problem is if for example so we keep building building a lot of infrastructures or keep doing the development but we are not paying attention on the sustainable uh, development it means that we are just losing that in one uh, in one time because of this uh, disaster happening and there are also democratic deterioration it means that uh, right now unfortunately not all of people can speak freely uh, because you know there is a threat of we call it as a civic space uh, threatened in Indonesia, something that we need to also address together to ensure that SDGs could be implemented and everyone can speak freely uh, according their own needs. Uh, so about the young people, right? So why I put a lot of attention on the young people? Because according to the quote here, as young people, if you want to make the SDGs a reality, we need to raise our voices louder and prouder than ever before. Being a young leader for SDGs gives me a chance to do so. This is a quote from Elida. Eskita Sioglu, I'm not, I'm sorry if I pronounce her name wrong, but this is actually, um, you know, like some, uh, some important message that we as a young people need to be taking care of our development. So why young people? According to Indonesian youth statistic, uh, Indonesian populations, uh, especially two, especially young people are about 23.86%. And because of this huge amount of young people, that's why we need to pay attention for them. Uh, young people are not only becoming the beneficiaries of the 2030 agenda, but we need to also play active role architects in its development and continue to be engaged in the framework and process that support its implementation, follow up and review. Unfortunately, we need to also address that there are high, very high youth unemployment, not only in Indonesia, but also abroad, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. 
uh, degree of young people involvement. So we need to also check whether, if, for example, you are inviting young people to the, to the discussion or to the developments. There are several things that you need to pay attention. Whether you are using, uh, for example, young people, you're inviting young people just for manipulate or decorate or the form of child involvement, or would you provide them an understanding or giving them a chance to speak or giving them uh, you know, an opportunity to collaborate actively. Uh, from this table, we need to pay attention on the number eight, where youth initiative and shared with adults. So it means that youth collaborate together with adults to actually promote the the fair and sustainable development. This is something that we want, right? Uh, for example, Restless Development, a youth-led development agency, partnered with the Commonwealth Secretariat in 2016 to prepare youth-led accountability for the SDGs, a guide to national action plan. So it means that we as a young people, we can do actually a very active role. Maybe some of you already heard about social entrepreneurship. That's another good idea where we can actually contribute and we are uh, reducing the dependency toward the donor or you know, the dependency of money coming from other people because social entrepreneurship means uh, sustainable uh, social actions that we can actually do as a young people. So there is a quote as well, without youth power, the global goals will fail. So it means because, you know, like those who are transformative, because SDGs is transformations, right? It's ambitious. So we need those young people who are ambitious and transformative in order to ensure that it can be achieved in 2030. Stages of building youth involvement in SDGs. So uh, actually, I I use I check this. I use uh, this information is coming from a guideline that we just established coming from Infit. So we need to pay attention on the preparation phase, ensure the readiness of young people. Uh, we need to also inline the vision and mission of young people, ensuring the protection of human rights because they are young people, right? That some of them are actually still. Uh, a child, for example, and that's why we need to take care of their human rights protections. And we need to also get to know the young people. We need to uh, acknowledge what are the main concern because not every, uh, not all of young people have the same concern. Maybe some of them focus on environment and some of them focus on gender and that's okay. And we need to also pay attention on the media outreach and using the understand understandable language. Uh, in terms of SDGs action planning stages, we can actually share the latest information and knowledge about the SDGs with young people, involve them in determining the targets and objective of the SDGs action, involve them in determining the tools, planning, and involve them in monitoring and evaluation. This is something that, for example, monitoring and evaluation, sometimes we forgot to in, you know, involve young people in the monitoring and evaluation of development, especially in the local level. And in terms of SDGs action stages, uh, we need to ensure that young people have the capacity to understand what are SDGs and how SDGs are important toward their uh, development. We need to uh, we need to also inf uh, involve them in national regional action plan. So maybe the, this is the case of Indonesia. Uh, we are not only having national action plan, but we also have regional action plan. Something uh, a good opportunity for young people to more involve. And the last one, we have collaborations. I think if we can create collaborations, multi-stakeholder partnership toward young people and also a lot of sectors coming from uh, you know different communities, I think that it will be great and it could be. Um, beneficial for us to achieve SDGs in 2030. I think that's all for our pres for my presentations. I would love to have more discussion. Thank you. Um, Ms. Emma? I think uh, Ms. Hannah has a problem. Okay, thank you so much to Ms. Denisa Amelia Kaloran um, for the great presentation about the SDG, about the how to um, SDG progress in Indonesia. Uh, actually, uh, I want to say thank you so much. Okay, we move to the next speaker. Um, she is a wonderful uh, teacher from Italy, uh, Ms. Stefania Binucci. Please welcome Mr. Vanya Vinuji. Hello, hello everyone. Hello. I'm very happy to be here with you and uh, thanks for being here to listen to me. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about gender equality and in particular about the role of women in literature. And uh, I would like to start with a question that is also a brainstorming. And uh, if you want to participate, uh, you can write your answer in the chat. But first of all, I need to share my screen. So just a moment.
Okay, can you see my screen? No, ma'am. No? Okay. No, not no. No, okay. Can you say can you say it again? Yeah. Okay, I try again. Allora. Mm -hmm. uh, allora, devo condividere questo. Vedi là? Dove? Qua. Ok, mm -hmm. il tuo schermo. Mm. Eh, però non ce l'ho. Condividi? Eh, non ce l'ho. Ah. Condividi? Eh. Adesso. Adesso dove? Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> What kind of reader are you? Right? Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. This is the first question I would like to propose to you. So, okay, have a look at these paintings, okay? Each of them shows a different kind of reader. All of them are women, okay? So, what kind of reader are you? I mean, the first one on the left, a woman on a train or the one in the middle, the woman who is uh, uh, watching um, women swimming maybe in a, in a river or in a sea, or the one on the right that is alone in her own bedroom, or the one at the bottom that has already uh, read, has just read, and she's lying on a sofa. Okay, these are all representations of women reading. Uh, I have another question for you. Is reading dangerous? Is reading dangerous for men? Is reading dangerous for women? And do all the people read in the same way in every country? I think these are nice questions to, to reflect about because I think that in every country we have different ways of uh, reading and I also think that there is a difference between reading in men and reading in women. Did you know, according to a survey, women read more than men? And can you guess why? Some people would say that women read more than men because they have more time, because they don't work, for example. So, for women in the past, reading was considered a dangerous pastime. For example, during the 18th century, publishers targeted women because they were seen as creatures of the imagination, of limited intellectual capacity, both frivolous and emotional. However, when the novel as a genre grew exponentially and spread in popularity, Critics share their fears that reading would lead to many problems of morality in English society. This is called, this was called novel fear and was especially directed towards women to whom novels posed a greater risk due to being seen as more sensitive, imaginative and easily manipulated by literature. What happens when you read? If you read, you reflect. If you reflect, you have an opinion. If you have an opinion, you differentiate from the others. If you differentiate from the others, you are an enemy. For women who were viewed as frivolous and emotional, reading was risky because it would excite romantic notions of love and allow women to fantasize about their futures and their potential power to change them. Instead of suppressing women through their domestic duties and maternal pursuits of marriage, as was expected from society, reading gave women a new type of freedom, one that was in their own minds. Reading fiction provided women the autonomy to dream of love and the future that they could control granting them agency for perhaps the first time in their lives. Okay, now have a look at this painting. 
What do you think about this woman? Okay, can you see her? She is sitting on a bench and she has uh, three volumes, three books on her side. So maybe she has just uh, read something very important for her. In fact, her pose is that of a proud woman, energetic, okay? She's uh, staring at you, she has, is staring at the audience. Maybe she is uh, thinking about the words she has just read. So she is the typical woman who reads and uh, um, for, for whom reading is dangerous because she isn't thinking about her duties. She uh, isn't thinking about looking, taking care of her children, of her husband. Uh, she is there and she's reflecting. Uh, men are afraid of the women who read. Why? So the woman, as I said before, is a sitting and she looks proud of herself. Now, it seems as if she is ready to act. During the 18th century, this is a curiosity, you could find a needle and it's a thread inside the book binding, just to remind women what their role was. So not reading, but taking care of children and house. What happened when the first woman learned to read? When the first woman learned to read, people started to question about the issue because the woman who reads asks question, questions. In this way, she destroys the rules. For example, Emma Bovary, created by Flaubert, found in the books what was missing in her life. And this was considered dangerous for those times. Women who read are more intelligent. This is a survey. These are not my words, of course. Women who read can appreciate their solitude when they are alone with a book and its author. They forget everything, husband, house, children. Do you remember the first uh, image, the first slide, the, the, the servant on the right, she was sitting on a chair she was reading, maybe she was a servant, and she forgot anything. She forgot to take care of the house, of uh, her owner. She was just with uh, uh, the author and uh, uh, the book. A woman who reads is completely involved in the reading. She is present, but her soul is completely detached from reality. Nobody can reach her. What happened if men would read as much as women? Maybe they could better understand the world of women. Women read differently from men and they read everything. Women love the men who read, but only seldom they read together. The true reader reads alone because he finds himself inside the book. Reading leads to self-confidence and self-confidence leads to critical thinking. Men not always love women who think because in this way, women can reach their brain and they sometimes refuse it. Sorry, says the writer Gottfried Benn. Reading is also a sigh of relief. Reading helps us forget the sorrows at least for one hour or two. Would you like something to read would be a wonderful invitation. Reading teaches how to live because you learn how other people live, but reading is also dangerous. So what should we do? What should we do as teachers, as motivators, as citizens of the world? We should strongly believe in education goal number four of the agenda. We should share the idea that knowledge makes us free. We should get informed first and then we should inform. We should contribute to break the walls of inequalities, of gender inequalities and of ignorance. If we are together, we will win. Thanks for your attention.
Um, okay, thank you so much, Mr. Fania Benucci, for the wonderful um, presentation about the topic is women and reading. This reading the news is very important to presentation about that. I think yes, for me, it's important for the woman is uh, one to reading. Reading about something, about the education, about the how to situation in the climate change. It's very important woman is to making reading. Thank you so much, Mr. Padre Benucci. Okay, now we can move to another speaker. Um, he is from Taiwan. Please welcome Mr. Ronnie Anthony from Taiwan. I think um, Ms. Uh, Mr. Ronnie has problem with microphone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, now it's good. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, it's my honor and pleasure to be part of this uh, uh, moment and talk about SDG. Okay. So good morning and good afternoon and good evening to every different part of the world. Uh, I will try to explain to you about my experience with the climate actions and uh, what I do with education for sustainable development. Okay, uh, so I will try to share my screen and uh, hopefully you can see. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, can you sh see my screen? Uh, yes, sir. yes, yes, okay. yes. Uh, so I will talk about the climate action and the education for sustainable development. So I just share my experience with you because I started working with uh, a grades uh, one to grade almost like 11 and 12 graders. You and I try to uh, have a, a few meetings with the university students too. Uh, so I will try to ex explain to you what is my experience, how we can implement the climate action and also uh, to incorporate uh, sustainable development goals in our uh, daily curriculums or topics in the class. Okay, so usually I told the you know, teachers and educators one uh, try to work on these goal steps. And uh, when you're working with the students, try to make sure you say oh, the problem and let them to think about solution and make them to be a, a part of the action, make them explore the consequences and try to pick the best solution. They may be have a lot of different solution. Uh, let the students to choose. Uh, you become a facilitator and uh, try to implement their solution with them. So try to make sure they do have the power for saying and they have the power to make the difference in their society not implementing your ideas our, our educators idea we need to walk with them uh, and just be a facilitator and then they were started to do the action so this is a picture you see we started an organic farm uh, it's um, around almost like a, a two cents or three cents an area and they'll be doing a group farming there so a lot of other members started to join there uh, so it's an initiative started by the students. It's almost like 80 years now, still going on. So recently, the younger uh, no, age students joined this uh, roof farming or organic gardening project. And we do, uh, students, they have an idea about, uh, you know, bicycle, promoting the idea of using more bicycles. So every year, uh, uh, like uh, two times, we take all the students, we try to invite the students around Taichung. Uh, to join this uh, bicycle trip and we there's a famous place called Holi in uh, Taiwan uh, it's in Miaoli, near the Miaoli so the students come and join this bicycle trips and we will uh, go for a, a kind of uh, almost two hour ride and uh, we have lunch and also students try to educate the locals there the imported so recycling and the SDG goals and the students uh, they feel uh, it's like they are in charge of this whole activity and I work with the senior high schools uh, near Taichung, and they take care of everything. They take the all planning, and we just follow them as an facilitator. And you can see the action, the climate action coming from them, and they feel 
they do have a power to say, then you decide what them to do it. Okay. And also this is uh, done by the uh, kids from the grade two and three and four. Uh, so we will try to take them to outside to the local uh, uh, you know, family mart. And this is the welcome shop. Uh, one of the convenience store in Taiwan. So they went there and they need to plan to buy things and to make sure the package and everything is eco-friendly. And that we need to try to say that uh, the conception, how smart you can do the conception, and how we can do the recycling and reuse of things and how we can use the product. And uh, at the end of the day, we found the students are very smart. When you give them a task, they follow the task and they want to give you best results. And they don't have a, like, they are fresh, and they will teach you a certain way that maybe we grown up people are doing in a wrong way and they have a better solution so we just need to listen to those students as i told you just be a facilitator and learn from them and we took the students to our touching uh, mayor's office and the students learn about different SDG goals and the products of it and mostly you will find these are the grade one kids grade one and two and two so you've seen pictures of grade one and two and three and mostly grade one kids or two kids uh, they are more interested in doing an action plan because they think they can make the difference they can make the change and they will come up with the different action plan like you know maybe daily basis or on a weekly basis too so we need to listen and uh, it's important in that climate action as i told you look for the students agency we need to listen to the students make them power than what we want to do it as an educator, sometimes we push the students and the whole idea of learning become messed up. You know, it, it just becomes so uh, in a different style. So please listen to the students and we joined the local uh, 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 bazaar. It, it was done by a Tai Chung uh, magazine, uh, Compass magazine. So students prepare different games and they sold their uh, vegetables from our organic garden and try to educate the uh, people how we can you know separate our waste and they did a lot of different activities and actually we we actually saved a lot of money by selling our uh, vegetables and we donate the money to a dog shelter uh, so i want to uh, make sure all the educators make sure it's come from the student must student powered one then we decide what to do and these are the activities a few climate action these are the uh, you know lemons we grown there we just try to sell it and the students trying to buy uh, the things from the local convenience store and try to make it a proper purchase and this is the pictures of that bicycle activity and this is the neighborhood we goes there very often on the weekends uh, to pick up the trash and uh, normally taiwan is a little bit cleaner but still there are trash uh, you can find it and also we can educate the uh, people about how to reduce the use of plastic or one time use of the plastic cans and the same picture from that uh, bicycle trail and this is we went to a school for, and we have a, a project with them treehouse project we went to a village and uh, we worked with the schools to cooperate with that school uh, to learn about their culture and uh, their way of living so students learn a lot you know staying away from the town and these are the stg club members and they just go out to have a you know discussion with the local people so they ask the questions to know that what is in the real issue in their neighborhood so they can find a solution uh, so this is from our farm and we are talking about energy how we can use energy properly what are the different ways we can save energy uh, that was the class the students also give the presentation and they try to implement how we can reduce the energy in the classroom and they have a reading of energy they use for like a one week and two weeks they start to check what are the ways we can cut down the energy uh, so about education uh, for the main thing I want to say, connect to the local issue. Make sure when you educate the kids about sustainable development, make them to connect to the local issue. So you can say, act locally, think globally, an idea. So if they cannot connect these issues to local, they won't get interested. And then the action plan become very like, you know, just only presentation, only papers, and the effectiveness goes very lower. And make sure the students know that action makes the difference. When the students feel that the action can make the difference, they will be involved and they will work with you. And you're going to see a very different students uh, excited. And you will say, I want to go to school. I want to meet them. It's a very different feeling. So action makes it. 
So when you do the education for the system of development, make sure you can cover these eight competencies. One is a system, the other one is anticipatory, normative, and strategic, and make sure you have a collaboration with, and make sure the students can do the critical thinking, and make sure they have the integrated problem solving, and they all self-fairness. These are the eight competencies you can check when you do a education for sustainable development. You can pick a three or four as a major one and push it. Mostly I pick collaboration and critical thinking and then regular problem solving and self-fairness. These are the one main topic I usually pick sometimes. And uh, also making out when you do the education with the students or sustainable uh, development, make sure you making seeking out the learner and also you acknowledging the learner's knowledge and experience. Please don't push it too much hard. If they don't understand the idea, students can work it on it. Don't make it complicated, make it simple. They can work it on it. And making the kind of relevant to them and then make the kind of relevant to them so they know it, they do have the power to say, they have a power to make a difference and they will be involved in that one. And you can use different teaching and learning process because sometimes one teaching process may not work with a certain age group. So you can change, adapt, storytelling, role play, anything you want, you can put, do with them. Uh, it works in a different way in, the, in your own area. And also try to enhance the learning environment. Make sure your learning environment is positive, happy mood. If it's gloomy, I think students it's not going to learn. They feel distracted. So make sure the learning environment is very enhancing one. And if you all want, you learn, this is a process of the environmental education, or sorry, education for sustainable development. It means when you learn, share, and you act and inspire others. So then this education spread around it, we can all learn from each other and make sure all we call it a five P's in the essence of SDGs is my people, prosperity, peace, partnership and planet. And then we can make the difference. So please learn, share and, and act and inspire. Oh, thanks a lot for giving me this time and it's my pleasure. And hopefully I can answer if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your presentations. Yeah, I do agree with you with uh, the problem solving step that you have uh, four steps. Uh, the first one is say the problem and the second one is think of solutions and the third one explore consequences and pick the best solution. I do agree with that because uh, we need uh, steps to like uh, solve uh, the problem, especially in in climate actions. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thanks for the now we, uh, yeah. Thank you. Now uh, we have uh, the last speaker from Pakistan, Miss Busra Anis. Um, hello, Miss Hannah. Um, um, we can continue to the next session because Miss Bosa not here. Um, okay, all right. So uh, I will open uh, the second section is discussions between speakers. So uh, uh, every speaker can ask uh, about the topic uh, from the other speakers and discuss it. Maybe, uh, Mr. Roni, uh, maybe you have any questions for Ms. Uh, Stephanie, you can ask, ask her or... Um, because yeah. I knew like a reading like for uh, the you know, ladies or females, it, it's very big because that makes the society different. The more uh, the ladies read, the society will be different. There will be like, if you want to see a modern society, it means that most of the ladies will lead, uh, read, okay? and. Like she says, it's dangerous. It's dangerous for uh, systems. It's dangerous for establishment because the more they read, they're going to ask more questions. They're going to make more dangerous to the establishment. So I do like uh, to reading. You know, I used to tell my students, read, 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 and they would say, "Is there any way? No, just read. You know, there's no other solution. Just read." You can read more than you are more, you know, then you can try to understand different opinion. Uh, that's often a whole world. And you know? also sometimes because of the new age, 
or the iPad and everything, students kind of started to get, they want a shortcut. They want everything in shortcut. They think that there is a capsule that they can eat and they can get everything. So I used to say, just read, you know, pick up a book and read. That's the only one. So I'm really happy to you know, listen from her about that reading, you know, in STG thing, because it's very important. Now, you know that we have an STG book clubs. I, I, I actually encourage students to, uh, you know, I have that book club in, in our school and try to put the logos, which uh, this book is covers, which STG, uh, like number one or two or three, you know, and, they, and the kids start to read because they need to read, then they can put the sticker. So I used some trick that sometime because I was like, is it makes sense? Do you think STG 11 is there? And they will go and read again. And they say, yes. Uh, so uh, that's a really good thing. The topic she mentioned about reading, I, mostly I don't hear the reading comes in the STG form. So thanks a lot for presenting the STG and especially uh, in a female, because uh, the females is different, you know, because they're uh, like most the working force or that comes from the female society, you know. Uh, even I'm a male, sometimes it's like, you know, we are chauvinist, but actually uh, the females are the most productive you know, people, you know, the brain of the society. So reading in, in among the females is a great thing, and hopefully males can learn a big lesson and we can start reading more and more. So thanks a lot, Stephanie. Okay. Stefania, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your words. Yes, as a matter of fact, when I proposed this um, research to my students, they were really excited because they know that uh, there are a lot of prejudices uh, towards women. You know, in Italy, it is uh, a little bit different because uh, the the situation is uh, uh, not uh, so dangerous like in other countries. So uh, we watched, for example, um, the news from Af Afghanistan and uh, the, the problems with women. And we talked a lot about uh, how brave women are. They are denied all their rights, especially the right to go to school, the right to, to, to do sport, the right to be educated. And so it was really shocking for them. Uh, I think that, as I said in the last slide, we as educators, we, we can do, we should do a lot to change the world. Um, but uh, the, the words of the writers of the past, especially, also especially women in the past, uh, the, the ones who used the, pen names to write because they were obliged to, to hide their identity. Um, I think that they, they gave us and are giving us a strong message. Even though the situation now is a, a, a bit different, but not in every country. So we, we, should, we should try to, to be united uh, to win, to do something. So thank you, Ronnie. Uh, th thanks a lot. You know, like what you said, you know, issues are different in you know, some places is kind of you know, high in one. But so sometimes I do worry, you know, sometimes the people we don't try to accept, like there is an issue here. And we always think that issue is in another place, you know, and we say, oh, our place, there's no issue. We are perfect. We are living in a wonderful, wonderful world. You, do you know, that's the problem. Sometimes I, I have a hard time to educate the people. Yes, we do have this issue. It's nothing wrong about accepting it, okay? Please don't think that issue is only in some or other countries. You know, there is an issue in our society, so please, let's address it. Then he's saying it's somewhere else, somewhere else. It's not my problem, you know, and we like, we try to figure out a problem that we cannot connect closely and we forget about the problems in my neighborhood. And I think this issue is everywhere. Somebody, even sometimes I think that this actually the movement can get marketed by the male fraternity. So they can market it properly and they control it and they use the female writers as a marketing. Sometimes, you know, this is a complicated issue. So we need to address those issues, then we can make the, you know, the right path or the right development um, than just just you know that uh, marketing strategy or like it's not my problem it's only happening somewhere else
Okay. Um, thank you so much for Miss uh, Stefania and uh, Mr. Ronnie. Maybe uh, Miss Denisa, do you have um, any questions for uh, Miss Stefania and Mr. Ronnie? Uh, Miss Denisa? Okay, I think Miss. Uh, okay, hello, Miss Denisa. I think Miss Denisa has problem with microphone. We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, Miss Denisa. No, we still cannot hear you. I think you have a problem with microphone. Ms. Ella, we're still waiting, Ms. Denisha, to, fi to fix the microphone. Hello, can, am I audible? Yes, okay. no. no. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm changing my yes, no. <laughs> computer right now with my friends. So uh, I would like to appreciate another speakers from Stephanie and Ronnie about uh, uh, telling, telling us about the global citizenship education. So I think this is one of the forums where, you know, like teachers and uh, people play important roles in educating people, especially about reading. I think it's very interesting how to improve, uh, you know, uh, people willingness especially for women to read more because in Indonesia right now I think in the context of the Indonesia not all of many people are interested to read we don't really read that's why a lot of hoax you know like of wrong information are spread out across the countries and it, it actually just it actually reduce the quality of our democracy and especially for women like um, we don't really read actually as well in Indonesia and about Roni I think I have like one question I think it's very important uh, your roles in educating the students you know uh, i just want to ask about how uh, how you uh, instill the curriculum educations in the schools and how to make it like sustainable because in because i actually i think two years ago i'm planning to create a global citizenship education projects for uh, junior high schools but still we do not have curriculum uh, I don't know how to make it like sustainable and whether should we, because we have limited budget, should we address teachers uh, in the curriculum of global education or should we address the children directly? Which one is more sustainable according to your experience? I think that's my patience. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Anyway, uh, the two ways, if you got enough resources, I will go, I would say go with the students. Okay, because <laughs> then you need a lot of resources. You need to send the trainers there. Otherwise, uh, you can sit with the teachers. So what I usually do, every uh, Tuesday I meet teachers and it's just as a regular meeting with every other homeroom teachers, I meet with them. But every unit plan, we sit together. So we know what is that unit. So we walk around and we figure out what are the SDG goals we can make a focus. So that you can do it. So you, but still uh, best way, students, uh, but you need more resources. You need to send educators or the special training people to there. Uh, but I, for a, like, if you want it to be, have a more sustainable and organic, I will say train the teachers. Uh, then you don't need to worry that much because if you train them, you you gonna you know you know you, you get the teachers there all the time, so then you don't need to put yeah. much resources. So, but only thing to go with them and plan it. Just talk to them a unit. So if you have a grade seven, sit with them and what is this month you're gonna teach, and then you pick it up. And there may be a something that you can connect and make a concept. And the connect the facts with the concept and ask some questions and then you can go with that SDG goal. And then you tell go to the tell the students, the teachers to go to the class and ask the students what kind of goal this can fit. And students will tell you the answer. You know, you put that all these SDG goals and tell the students which goals do you think that this 
concept or these questions that you want to ask under this concept, which comes under. And then teachers can guide or facilitate them. Uh, and, and then they say, yeah, it's fine to have a two or three different goals, uh, but just focus on two or three and let them come up with a plan. And that's it. Uh, so that's what I tr do it, uh, but if it, it's up to your resources. Uh, but and also the Prala, I don't know how the Indonesian curriculum works uh, because I don't know if a seventh grade they're learning in a science or something very a totally different thing. So how you can connect? So that's also a problem. So that you need to work it on on your ground level. Uh, but this it will be the easy and the solution. Go to meet these teachers uh, once in a month grade seven or grade eight and have a meeting with them and then you ask them come over there tell me what you are teaching in, in in this month and then you try to con connect with the concept that were all the subject and you don't need to make everything connected okay sometimes educators try to push they want everything in math and everything that's impossible then you overdoing and ruining the whole learning process kids gonna get bored of it and teachers too because teachers like what are i going to do with my math class about stg so don't, don't need to do it everything into it okay sometimes it can be literature like reading the lumen like a woman literature gender equality those can be there you can talk about reading up and, and they can be different you can put it uh but i i like this idea that you go and meet every grade level once in a month and sit with them and then come up with a concept and then ask them like a little bit close, like try to make a statement or one and tell them to pitch it with the st uh, students and come up with an idea and pick the strategic goal please don't tell them your strategic goals let them decide okay let them decide and then you follow and then after one year you got it and then easy easy you just did it one year and you got everything documented and the next year easy so next year teachers will say oh it's fine i knew it already and the teacher will more confident the first year they're going to ask a lot of questions they're going to complain a lot <laughs> prepare for that <laughs> and that's fine okay and then the next year will be fine because the teachers already know it exactly what's going on okay and encourage the teachers too okay sometimes teachers have a lot of work if you come with an STG, they're going to, oh, God, one more thing to do. We got it. We got a lot of other things. So please encourage them and educate them and tell them, so that now um, this is good for us. Let's make a difference. And teachers will agree. You know, initially they're going to complain. And that's a human condition. Uh, but, let's make a but, you know, let them encourage and make less a team feeling. They will do it. Hopefully, I answer your question. Sure. That's very comprehensive answer. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think um, for discussion between speakers is over and I will open the last session is Q and A from the participants. So now every participants uh, have opportunity to ask uh, the questions about this topic uh by using uh, the chat box you can uh, write it on the chat box and i will read it uh for you to um, our speakers okay um every participants can ask the questions now Okay, um, I'll go first. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Miss uh, Stephanie about uh, the women uh, can read. So, um, did you uh, found like any differences uh, from the past uh, and now, like uh, the interest in in reading books? Uh, did you found it, Miss? Okay, um, with my students, we tried to analyze the situation in the English speaking countries in the past. And uh, uh, we made a comparison with uh, some countries today and Italy. So, uh, concerning Italy, we can say that um, maybe there is uh, some difference between the north and the south so 
in the north the uh, we can say society uh, we can call it is more developed than in the south in the south we can notice some areas in which women are considered let's say sort of inferior to men okay uh, they don't work because in the south there is a problem with uh, uh, jobs they spend a lot of time at home uh, they take care of their children or their husband so it's a sort of patriarchal society like in the past so we noticed this uh, comparison between the present and the past in the area in the region where i live that is in the middle of italy there are no differences and also in the north so that was a very interesting uh, research and in particular we tried uh, as i teach in a uh, art high school uh, we analyzed uh, some paintings and uh, um, it was very interesting to notice how painters uh, described their vision of uh, the woman, the woman who uh, reads and the woman who writes. So that was a sort of uh, interesting activity. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your answers. Yeah. And uh, there's uh, questions from uh, for Mr. Ronnie from uh, Zoengba. Mr. Ronnie, can you speak Mandarin with children? Can I? I can, but you, I teach in actually international school program. Uh, so usually I like I, my instruction is in English, but sometimes uh, I use my basic Chinese because I'm not uh, Taiwanese. I hope you can figure out my from face. Uh, I am from India and live here in Taiwan for the last 17 years, uh, but can speak Chinese, but not that fluently, <laughs> but I can live around here no problem but it, okay but i i don't use that much chinese in my classes but i do uh, because sometimes the, some students they don't get certain uh, you know vocabularies or words so I try to explain to them uh, with my minimum chinese you know. so far i didn't feel that hard uh, you can use even without the chinese it's about the communication but y you know that if you can uh, patience and listen to them I don't think language is a big problem. It just was just the art of the communication is most important. Uh, some people have a hard time, you know, but for me so far, I didn't have no problem at all. So I do speak a little bit, not very often. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Uh, maybe um, any participants have uh, any questions? Mr. Fadila, maybe you have any uh, questions for uh, Ms. Denisa? Yes, I think for uh, Ms. Denisa, uh, I really agree about what the Ms. Denisa, Ms. Denisa say with the presentation about the SDG, SDG growth in Indonesia. Yes, it's really great. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Fadila. So, um, yeah, I think uh, there's uh, no more questions from any participants. And I think... Uh, for discussions today, I think that's all. But uh, before we end this um, summit, uh, maybe any uh, speakers have a closing statement from uh, Mr. Roni or Ms. Stephanie or... Uh, Just want to like uh, encourage all of you guys what you guys are doing, okay? Even a participant, even your listeners, because you are spending your time uh, because you are interested in it, SDG goals, and it means a lot. Okay? And for me, and sometimes even a participating in, in a discussion, it means a difference because you're interested to make the difference. And we are living in a different places and our resources may be different, uh, but I, I do appreciate those people who are working with the minimum resources and you making the big difference and hats off to you guys, because sometimes we do have more resources so we can work things around very easily uh, because uh, it's a different place, right? 
And I do appreciate those people who works with a very minimum resources. And, and also through this COVID-19 pandemic, they're staying at home, doing online classes, educating people. And, and that's a challenge. And okay, and I, I need to take this time and opportunity to say thanks to all of you educators. You're working hard 24 seven, preparing things for your students. Uh, you are the heroes and keep making the difference and be mad. Thank you, sir. Uh, maybe from, I would like um, to, yeah, I would like to say something. Um, I find these webinars really beneficial and motivating also for our job because sometimes the teacher feels alone. Okay, we, we, we are asked to educate, but we need to be educated also through the contribution of all of you, all the other teachers all around the world. And if we feel that we are um, um, reaching the same goal, so we, we are, together we are stronger. And um, this is a way to break the walls, really to break the walls. That it means that today I'm talking with uh, Ronnie, with, uh, um, Miss Denisa and with all the other people who are around me and I feel less alone and uh, this is really really great for me <laughs> so thank you for this opportunity <laughs> thank you everybody thank you Miss. Uh, can I say words oh yes uh, yeah. thank you very much I would also say thank you very much for inviting me maybe I'm not coming from a teacher background but I'm very happy to be able to share here so maybe in the, in the context of SDGs our organization focus more on the governance of SDGs so it's like we try to implement SDGs in the national and local level but like seeing the practical experience like how SDGs can actually works and uh, through the experiences coming from Stephanie and Ronnie, it actually shows that everyone can make a difference. And I'm very happy and delighted, and hopefully I could able to implement it, some of the ideas here, so to scale up the projects. This is something that I'm dreaming of, but unfortunately I could not able to do until now, but hopefully through this like learning experience, peer learning, and hopefully in the future we still can connect to each other. So if, for example, we have, you know, like informations or, you know, like we can share together through, for example, webinar or sometimes if I would go to Italy or, you know, Taiwan. Uh, I went once to Taiwan. It's it's a great country. So maybe like one time. So maybe that this is a great opportunity for us to collaborate because SDGs could not be happen if, for example, we are not collaborate. It's ambitious, but it's still possible. So thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Maybe uh, Mr. Fadila, do you have any words? Yes, I just want to say thank you so much for all speakers in the summit. We can start in the first day, it's very wonderful, second day, really wonderful, and then now we start in the last day. It's really a wonderful topic, wonderful speaker. Me, with the Workforce International team, I want to say thank you so much, really, to all speakers. Today, we influence about new things to all audience, to our speaker, to our teacher, and to all um, inspirational. And then we say thank you so much, and then see you in the wonderful summit. And then before that, uh, I think for the certificate, we can send in the 4th October. Uh, okay, and then thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Hannah. Thank you, Miss Tevi, Mr. Ronnie, Miss Denisa, and to all wonderful speaker. I love his talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Fadila. So um, I would like to say thank you for um, every speakers and every participants. Uh, thanks for uh, sharing your idea and Thanks like for everyone for coming here and spend your time to this uh, benefit summit. And I hope we can meet in the uh, next summit. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, see you in the next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Have a good day. See you.